In this video, I will put the PowerQueen 200 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery to the test. It is a truly massive 2560 watt hour battery weighing a bit under 50 pounds, but that's still lighter than an equivalent flooded lead acid or AGM battery. I don't receive any commissions for this video. The battery sample was provided by the manufacturer for testing and review. Let's take a look at the details and specifications on the iPowerQueen.com website. As you can see from the pictures, it uses encased prismatic LFP cells with a BMS on top. I do not intend to break open the battery for this review as that is not what a normal customer would do. Either the battery works or it doesn't. I like the fact that they use grade A cells and the BMS has all the standard protections. No low temperature protection. When charged below freezing temperatures, LFP cells exhibit a sharp degradation in capacity. As a result, their internal resistance increases and capacity is incrementally lost with each cycle. PowerQueen does offer a self-heating battery as well as a battery with low temperature cutoff integrated into the BMS. That would be suitable for customers who operate in severe outdoor winter conditions. Now for a real-world test scenario of this battery. With a capacity of about 2.5 kilowatt hours, it's big enough to be seriously considered for cooking tasks. Here I will use my Pure 12 volts DC hot plate or cooktop prototype as well as a variety of natively DC powered ovens for a cooking test. In this part of the test, I'm basically stressing the PowerQueen 200 amp hour LifePo 4 battery with three DC power cooking appliances. There is no inverter here, there is no charge controller. It's just straight DC all the way through. I do have my amp meter mounted right there, you can see it right over there. And that's just to keep an eye on how much power is going in and out of the battery, because for the sake of the review I need to know how much power actually can be stored in it. Is it 200 amp hour? I also have a DC voltmeter there just to keep an eye on the overall battery voltage. On the left I have a DC oven, this is a 12 volts DC custom oven, it's modified. And on the bottom is another 12 volt DC oven that I built in a video. If you want to see any of those videos, they're linked in the description. This is a DC cooktop prototype I built. This is 100% 12 volts DC. This whole thing here is running on 12 volts DC. There's no inverter, there's no high voltage, there's no fancy electronic circuits, there's no induction. It's just pure 12 volts DC coming through a pair of wires and going into that cooktop. It's hooked right into that battery right there at the terminals. And that's going to be boiling the noodles. You can actually kind of see them boiling already. This is to demonstrate the power of DC cooking. Everything you see here is running off of pure 12 volts DC. All three of these cooking appliances are being run by the battery right now. But there is four 100 watt solar panels outside that's helping it along. I can disconnect those anytime if I want to see what the battery can do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, I have disconnected these solar panels outside, four 100 watt solar panels. And let's take a look and see what happens. There is no assistance from the solar panels outside because I have disconnected those for this test. Just to see how the battery performs under a higher level of stress. You can see right here that I'm pulling about 600 watts from the battery. And the noodles are about to boil over. They're cooking pretty well. And the bread is not quite ready and the food in that oven isn't quite ready either. Looks like the noodles will be ready first. You can see that the battery is going to run about 3 hours and 57 minutes at this rate, assuming a 200 amp hour capacity. It's with about 2.5 kilowatt hours of power, you could essentially replace the fuel tank. You can cook using appliances like this and a battery and some solar panels using no fuel at all. This is completely renewable and will charge over and over and over again and cook hundreds and hundreds of meals without burning a single drop of fuel. How is the battery performing under this load? Well, I'm drawing about 46.5 amps. The terminal voltage is right around 12.94 volts. Now this battery is mostly charged, or at least it was when I started the test, and the numbers look about right to me. 
At this moment, there is no charging from the sun, so the solar panels are not helping the battery at all. It's running everything by itself. According to this meter, I should be able to run these appliances for 3 hours and 53 minutes. But of course, it's not going to take anywhere like 3 hours to cook this food. Maybe it would take 30 minutes, maybe it would take 45 minutes, which means I could easily cook multiple meals off of this 200 amp hour Power Queen battery without too much trouble at all. Of course, if I'm getting some help from the sun, and even four 100 watt solar panels can make a huge difference, then that formula changes quite a lot. In fact, I could probably cook all day using this setup if I was careful, had four 100 watt solar panels in the sun, and didn't burn the power too quickly. All right, let's check the food here. I'm certainly not a cook. This is not about cooking, really. It's about testing a battery and running these DC appliances. It looks like that food there needs more time, and really that bread there, I'm just going to leave it in there. I'm not really sure, but I want to make sure it's cooked. And the noodles are probably getting pretty close. Let's open the pot and take a look at those. Yeah, I'm just going to leave them in there some more. Efficiency is a big part of the research work that I do here. Lithium iron phosphate batteries by themselves are pretty efficient. But usually that power gets translated through a charge controller and through an inverter, and every time you translate the power, some of it is wasted. These cooking appliances are far more efficient than their AC counterparts because they're taking the power right out of that battery and putting it straight into the food. There is no translation in between other than the wires themselves, which do get a little bit warm, but that's not a big deal. All right, let's check on the food here. I think it's just about done, although I'm no expert on cooking. I'm not a cook. Yeah, I'd say it's a little overdone actually, but it's still edible. So that's ready to eat. And the bread looks to be pretty much done, I would say. This is not a cooking channel, but sometimes you have to cook to do research. And the noodles surely by now must be done. Yeah, I would say they are. It's a bit hot in here from running all of these cooking appliances, so I went ahead and connected my AC inverter and turned on my air conditioner just to test the battery a little bit extra. So I ran this air conditioner for quite a long while and it passed the test with flying colors, no problem there. According to this meter, I should be able to run the air conditioner for over five hours without any solar charging at all. Of course, if I turn on the solar panels, then that number will increase and I should be able to get through the entire day running the air conditioner, no problem at all. This test is a great opportunity to show the reality of kitchen grade cooking appliances running off of simple 12 volt DC systems without the use of a so called off grid DC to AC inverter. Again, the fact that this setup also doesn't use a charge controller deserves its own video and will be explained separately. I have been testing this 200 amp hour Power Queen for some time now. It has the rated capacity and it performs as advertised, so I will recommend it. To avoid being biased, I don't accept commissions for product sales. If you're interested, there's a discount code and a product link in the description. Thanks for watching and thanks Power Queen for providing a sample for this test and review.